Hey, today we're going to learn about converting polar lines, which is an extension of yesterday when we did converting polar points. Um, at the end of the lesson, I'm going to review with you how to complete the square, and your homework tonight is Math Excel. So this um, video goes along with the worksheet on converting lines. So let's kind of review some of the equations that you needed to know from yesterday. So of course, we can create a triangle and have the Pythagorean theorem. So x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. Um, you also could be looking for plain old r and take the square root of both sides. Um, the other conversion is obviously if we were to write out the cosine, we would have x over r. If we were to multiply this r up, we could convert x to be r cosine. And similarly, we convert, convert y to be our sign. Those are kind of the formulas that you're going to need to know for converting between rectangular and polar. So we're going to start with lines. I would hope that you recognize on this worksheet that number one and number two are lines that you see in rectangular. So one of the things we're going to ask you to do over and over and over again is to convert between the form. So if it's in rectangular, we want you to convert it to polar. And if it's in polar, we want you to convert to rectangular. So you need to use those conversions that are written at the top of your paper. So if I wanted to change y, I could very easily change y into r sine theta and set it equal to negative three. Now, you don't have to get r by itself, although we did want to point this out to you because some textbooks will write it like this, or if you ever see it as r equals, um, I could divide the sign over. It is totally fine to leave it as r sine. We want you to be able to recognize that you know that that's a line, okay? So if you think about this line in rectangular, um, anything in rectangular has x's and y's, and anything in polar has r's and thetas. So you are done after this first step. That is a line in polar form. So now we want you to graph it. So if you think about what does y equal negative 3 look like in rectangular world, I hope you remember that it's a horizontal line going straight across. So similarly, on the polar grid, I'm going to count down negative 3 and draw a line straight across. And that's it. So take a second and see if you can do number two. What would the equation look like? And then what would the graph look like? So we can change x to be r cosine. And again, you can find r by itself, but you don't necessarily have to. It's totally fine to leave it as r cosine. And since it's positive 4, I would just count 4 on the polar axis and go straight up and down. Okay, so these are two very common lines that existed in rectangular world, but we know that there's other lines as well. So number 3 and number 4 are both in polar. And if they're written in polar, we want you to change them to rectangular. Okay, so number 3 is a little more tricky in that I really need to get rid of the theta. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the tangent of both sides. And so by doing that, I can then know what tangent of pi over 4 is. That's a nice one. It's just 1. And tangent can be written as y over r and x over r, or if I multiply by the reciprocal, just y over x. And then I could very easily swing that x up, and I get the equation y equals x. So that's it, uh, y equals mx plus b. And if you think about the graph, if theta is pi over 4, what I would do is I would draw a line through pi over 4. And then I would go the other way as well because it is a line that goes in both directions. So it should make sense. We have other lines that go through the origin. And we have lines that are horizontal and vertical. So you can take a second now and pause the video and try to do the rest of them on your own. Okay, so the goal of the lesson today should be that we want you to be able to, given any polar equation, you recognize that it's a line. And then can you graph them on the polar grid? And can you convert the, between the forms? If it's polar to rectangular, and if it's rectangular to polar. So it should be fairly obvious that after doing some of these problems, any time you want a horizontal line going straight across, it's an R sine equation. 
And anytime you have a vertical line going up and down, it's an R cosine equation. And then lines that are just in polar is generally theta equal to some radian would give you another type of line. Okay. But we also kind of need to talk about the symmetry. So if you have horizontal lines going straight across, remember we're changing it. It's no longer the x-axis and the y-axis and the origin. It's now the x-axis is our polar axis. The y-axis is the pi over 2 axis. And the pole is the origin. So horizontal lines are actually symmetrical to the pi over 2 axis. Vertical lines are symmetric to the polar axis. And lines that are like theta equals a number is actually symmetric to the pole because it goes straight through the pole. Okay, so you need to know that. So that is how you convert lines. I think they're fairly straightforward. And now we're going to talk about how to complete the square, which is something you need to know for tomorrow for when we do circles. Okay, so this is something that you did back in geometry is you have this written out. What the first thing I would recommend doing is moving all my X's to be together and all my Y's to be together. And I'm going to move any numbers to the other side. So notice I put this blank line here is because when you complete the square, you have to find that magic number. And you do that by taking the middle number. So in this case, eight dividing by two and squaring it. So eight divided by two is four. 4 squared is 16. So that's what I'm going to put in this space. And I would do the same thing for y. 2 divided by 2 and that is 1. 1 squared is 1. So I'm going to put a 16 in this spot and a 1 in this spot. But I can't just put them there. I also have to add them to the other side. So you'll see I added a 16 and 1 to the same side. After I do that, the next step is I'm actually going to factor this part of it because it'll factor nicely into a perfect square. And I'm going to factor my y's. And on this side, I'm just going to add that all together. So what happens is it factors into this, x minus 4 squared and y plus 1 squared. And then on this side, the 1's cancel, so you get just 16. And from that, I hope you know that you have a circle. And with circles, you can find the center. Notice it's a negative 4, but positive 4, and a positive 1, but negative 1. So the center is 4, negative 1. And the radius is this number square rooted. It's not always going to be a nice number, but in this case, it happens to be 4. So that is something you'll need to do. So you can try number two now, and then when you're done with that, you can start working on your homework, which is Math Excel.